50 favorite quotes for an innovation mindset, quotes that inspire me to innovate. Everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear, right? This is a great one. A lot of times we have all these ideas, right? But we don't take action on them because of fear. We need courage. Just like me with this quilt project, I've had this idea for many years, but I haven't had the courage to actually build something, create something out of it, turn it into a program or an ebook. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. This is a great African proverb. If you, you know, I think there's a need for both in innovation. We need to go fast. So that means how do we inspire ourselves to take action alone, to get started? But to know that if we want to go far, if we want to create something significant, we cannot do that alone. We need other people to be our collaborators, to be our partners, to do it with us, right? So I love this aspect. 80% of success is showing up. Woody Allen, classic quote, famous quote, right? Many of us just do not show up. We do not do what we could do or should do so because maybe we don't feel like it, right? But you don't necessarily have to feel like it to be on the right path, right? So how do you show up more even if you don't feel like it? Go to that event, go to that workshop, open up that book, do that online course. Just show up. You can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have, right? And it's almost like a muscle, right? This creative muscle in our body or in our mind. The more we're creating ideas and being creative, thinking of new solutions, the better we get at it. The more it becomes natural for us and easier for us. So I always love to be always working on an innovation project or always working on an idea, always trying to apply my creativity in using that part of my brain. To avoid criticism, say nothing. Do nothing. Be nothing. Yes, I mean, this is a, a very big one for me. This has been very uh, uh, limiting in my life, I'll say, preventing me from doing the things that I've wanted to do because I was afraid of criticism. And this is especially true now in our age where it's the internet age, right? If you put something out there online, like a book or a video or a blog post, you might get that comment, you might get that low rating, you might get that critique, right? And one thing I love to do is take a look at even your favorite books uh, on Amazon and look at the ratings and the reviews. Even your favorite, the best books even have one-star ratings from Frankly, some people that might be unusual, right? They, they don't maybe uh, know how to interact well with others, and they're just being maybe negative, right? So you shouldn't let that stop you. Look at your favorite songs on YouTube, and you'll see thumbs down. You'll see negative comments, right? Sometimes this is people just wanting to get attention, so nothing to take personally, but almost know that if you want to take it to that level that's more public, you will get criticism. You will get these kinds of things. But if you want to avoid it, you can't, you're not going to have anything, right? So go for it. Get it out there. Know that the criticism is part of the process. That's an Aristotle quote. Some of these innovation quotes, they go back thousands of years, right? Innovation is not a new thing. The human species thinks in metaphors and learns through stories. Oh, yeah, this is important, right? How do you learn? I learn I learn through stories. You know, I love to hear stories. I remember stories. For me to tell my own story is important. For me to tell the story of the idea that I have that I want to take action on, the innovation for the world, just like I did with you here, telling the story about how I uh, have been interested in quilts for some time, what started this program I built, my friend Sean doing some painting, right? How I've always wanted to create a quilt book, right? And we think in metaphors too, right? We understand things through metaphors and analogies. That's like this, right? So when you're sharing your innovation, you know, help people understand it's like this. In the uh, startup world, a lot of times how they pitch the startups are, it's like Airbnb, but for this. It's like Uber, but for this. It's like Amazon, but for this right? You're using your metaphors. 
when we really pay attention, everything is your teacher. Uh, that's true. You know, a big part of innovation is observing what is happening out there, right? That helps you know the ideas that you could create, the real problems that you could solve when you're observing, when you are paying attention, including when you're launching your idea. Pay attention to how people are responding to it, how you might be able to make it better, communicate in a way that they get or understand. I've been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. And you know, this is the stage for us with innovation and our innovation mindset. It is not enough just to be thinking of ideas and listing ideas and developing ideas. We have to do something. We have to take action. Right? We've actually got to do that. Knowing is not enough. Being willing is not enough. Right? What can you do to give yourself a little bit more urgency to do? Right? That's the true value of innovation is when we apply a new technology or a new idea and actually do something with it for real, not just think about it or sketch it out. There is nothing quite so useless as doing with great efficiency something that should not be done at all. Peter Drucker, I've got a lot of great Peter Drucker innovation quotes in here. You know, we want to make sure that what we're creating and what we're doing is meaningful, right? That it should be done. There's a lot of things that are happening in organizations and in our world that may not even be needed, right? And it's almost useless to try to do that perfectly or with great efficiency when that isn't even needed at all, right? So we always want to make sure and we check that the thing that we're creating, the innovation that we have, uh, and the time that we're spending on it is something that is needed that should be done. If you want something new, you have to stop doing something old. Another Peter Drucker quote. Yes, a lot of us, when we're doing our innovation work, uh, we only think about doing the new stuff, all right, and adding on the new stuff and more new stuff and more new stuff. And soon enough, we find ourselves with a lot, without very much time. And we're stressed because we're doing too many things and not doing maybe any of those well. So sometimes it's good to think about when you're innovating and your challenge, what should we stop doing? right? Because when you think about what you could stop doing, what has lived out its life cycle, right? Uh, what isn't needed anymore? Then you have space, you have room, you have time to create the new things and devote time to the new things. Doing the right thing is more important than doing the thing right. Again, right? That kind of fits that same, uh, I guess, theme that Peter Drucker is talking about. We want to make sure that the thing we are doing is the right thing. It's a thing that's meaningful, that's going to have impact, going to have value, going to meet our original purpose, right? Versus doing things that may not be as important, but doing them right, right? We want to do the right thing. What gets measured gets improved. Another Peter Drucker quote, right? How do you keep data? How do you keep information, stats, on the thing that you're doing that you're launching so you know how to measure if you're having the effect that you want to have so you know how to measure if it's getting better and how you might be able to make it better right measure it keep some data some statistics an idea is a new combination of old elements <laughs> you know a lot of the ideas that that i'm building that i'm launching our old things, like this quote uh, presentation or this quote program. I've had this for many years. I've had some of these quotes for many years. I found a new program to lay these quotes over beautiful images. I found new ways of sharing it online with SlideShare or YouTube or an online course, right? So I'm combining things that already exist to be able to create this new idea, right? So that's what an idea is. It's a combination of other ideas, usually. Things that already have existed, but you're putting them together maybe in a new way for you. Opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. You know, I'm a big believer in working smarter, more so than harder. But make no mistake, this is still going to take hard work to do the innovation work that you want to do, to launch that idea, to make it real, to make it have an impact, it is going to take work. But the work should be fun, right? This innovation stuff is fun. So hard work can also be fun and really meaningful. Another Thomas Edison quote, I love this one, results. Why, man, I have gotten a lot of results. I know several thousand things that won't work. 
right? So that is almost the nature of innovation is we try a lot of things and we keep trying. And when we try that much, things will work, right? We will have an innovation. We will have something that works. Many times people just try once and when it doesn't work, they stop. No, 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 no. We have to do a lot of casts to catch one fish, right? We have to try a lot of things. And when something doesn't work, that's a learning for us. That's a new understanding. That's new knowledge for us, right? I love this Thomas Edison quote. Always have. I've had this one in my mind for years and years. Creativity is intelligence having fun. Albert Einstein, right? So it's not just about the information. It is about the creativity, right? Being able to take that information, your intelligence, and have fun with it, creating something new, new ideas with it, new applications for it. The creation of a thousand forests is in one acorn. Ralph Waldo Emerson. I love the acorn. That's my personal symbol. And you know what? It just starts with a little thing. You know, the huge forest started with an acorn. That big tree started with an acorn. It keeps producing acorns, trying to grow, expand more trees, right? But it all starts somewhere with a very little thing. So you might have a very little idea right now that you're trying to get the mindset and motivation to launch, to make real, to put into action and in life. And it could be a big thing, right? It could be a big thing, but it starts somewhere. It starts with something small. Do not be too timid and squeamish about your actions. All life is an experiment. Ralph Waldo Emerson, right? Remember, this nature of this innovation stuff is we do not create something perfect right out of the gate, right from the start, right? So we can't be timid about taking action, right? We're experimenting, and all of life is an experiment too. Either write something worth reading or do something worth writing, Benjamin Franklin. You know, wow. Isn't this something important? To do something significant with our life, right? What is your book, right? What do you want to do in your life? I hope your innovation is something that matters, something big, something that is inspiring to you and is you're passionate about, and something that will make a difference for other people. Sometimes we don't go big enough. Sometimes we just go with something small that isn't very significant. But you could be surprised at what you could do if you go a little bit bigger. If you do something worth reading or something worth writing. Always be a first-rate version of yourself and not a second-rate version of someone else. Judy Garland. Right? With the innovation that we're creating, what we want to do in our work and in our life, how can that be authentic? How can that be from us? You, know, you can tell that that's an idea or something that you created. You can tell it's an idea or a new product or a service or a program or an initiative or a new way of doing something that your organization or your group created because it fits you. It's authentic to you versus just copying something else and doing it, right? Just copying something and launching it isn't as fun or as engaging as designing something based on who you are. This is a really interesting one about the state of the world. Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Facebook, the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer, has no inventory. And Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. Something interesting is happening. Yes, right? we're talking about big ideas and different ideas and ideas that can be disruptive and change the game, right? Isn't that amazing? You know, these companies that are so valuable uh, and they don't have, they don't own the things that they would own, right? Airbnb doesn't have any real estate, but it's a huge company. So, wow, there is always opportunity for wildly different ideas. And what's happening here are these companies are creating a platform where other people are interacting with each other on the platform. They're making the connections possible. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, a great hockey player. I'm not that into hockey, but I love Wayne Gretzky's quotes, right? Uh, you know, this is a theme that I think you'll hear throughout this presentation is that you've got to take shots, you've got to try, you've got to do experiments, you've got to get into action again and again and again. 
right? That's the key. Many of us don't do that. We can't break through and do that. So we need to start taking shots, launching ideas. Another Wayne Gretzky quote, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been, right? Very important, right? Sometimes we go to where something has been. We go into the past. We look at how things have been done in the past versus how could they be done in the future? What is a better way? What is the trend? Where is the future heading? So I hope the innovation you're thinking about and working on is a future-focused one, one that's going to fit a trend for the future versus something that has been in the past and is disintegrating, right, or going away. Lots of people know a good thing the moment the other fellow sees it first. All right, so uh, this is a good one, right? So, you know, sometimes we wait for other people to be able to give us the validation uh, that it is a good idea, right? But I also like something about here, the other fellow sees it first, right? How do we let that other fellow see our idea? Even if it's our idea, could it become their idea, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways to think about a quote like this. The great thing in this world is not so much where we are, but in what direction we are moving, All right? So, you know, you could start here. Maybe you've never done any of this innovation stuff before. Maybe you've never tried doing the new and the different. Maybe you've never tried making change happen before, right? But what's important here is that that's something that you want to do. There's something inside of you that wants to do that a little spark, right? That that is the direction that you want to move in. If you want a quality, act as if you already had it. Try the as if technique, William James. So you might just be getting started here. Maybe you've never done this before, right? But you could act like you have, right? Act like you've been there before is the saying. Another one that I like is called fake it till you make it. And that's in the recovery world. People who are recovering from addictions, for example, are, are faking it until they make it, right? Acting as if, right? So almost putting yourself into the position like you have been there before, right? So I think that could be a technique that could help you move things forward. Fall seven times, stand up eight. That's another lesson of innovation, right? You're not going to probably succeed your first time. You might fall down seven times in a row. You might not have success seven times in a row, but keep producing ideas. Keep launching new innovations, new attempts, right? Keep coming back again. Steve Jobs quote, people think focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on, but that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that there are. You have to pick carefully. I'm actually as proud of the things we haven't done as the things I have done. Innovation is saying no to 1,000 things. So this fits the, the process that I'm trying to teach you for innovation where we have a challenge, we create a number of questions, and we try to generate hundreds of ideas for the different things that we could do. But then the very important part is that next phase of the process where we try to focus in on what is that one thing that we should do first? What is that one concept that we can create from a lot of ideas, right? How do we focus in on that thing that is the best thing versus do all 1,000 ideas, right? We want to focus. How strange that the nature of life is change, yet the nature of human beings is to resist change. And how ironic that the difficult times we fear might ruin us are the very ones that can break us open and help us blossom into who we were meant to be, right? This is, this is the, the important piece, right? Change. Innovation is really about change, right? We're doing something new and different we've never done before. It might be trying to involve others in doing something new and different they have ne never done before. To change, to be a part of a change, to respond to change, to make change happen for a better world, right? So even though it seems logical that this will be a change that we'll want to make and others will want to make because it makes sense, remember that human beings are pretty resistant to change. So that's why we need to work hard and work smart on how do we launch this innovation so they get it, understand it, buy in, be a part of it, 
in our, uh, and also have some courage to do it with us. You can't wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club. Oh, yeah, this is a true one, right? We can't just sit around and wait till we're inspired or motivated. We need to work hard even on getting that inspiration, getting that motivation, and then we have it just keep going, right? It's like me when I built this uh, quilt program. I I did it over a weekend uh, at three different uh, visits to a coffee shop where I spent maybe two to three hours at a coffee shop and then recorded this when I was still motivated and still inspired after I got back home, right? I created a blog post about it, shared it with friends. I was inspired, and I used that inspiration when I had it. But really, you know, you, you can't wait. I wasn't motivated at first when I went to that coffee shop, right? But then I got that text message from my friend Sean about his painting, thought about that painting quote, and I took that as a sign to move forward, right? So go after inspiration with a club. Many a man fails because he never tries, right? So the failure here isn't doing something that doesn't work or doing something that isn't successful, right? That is a learning, right? Remember the Thomas Edison quote, results. He's gotten a lot of results. He knows several thousand things that won't work, right? When you try something and it doesn't work or it, it doesn't work that well, you learn. You learn how to make it better, what to try the next time, right? But the only failure really is in never trying. Challenges are what make life interesting and overcoming them is what makes life meaningful, right? So along the way here, you're going to have challenges. You're going to have problems, right? And uh, you could have an attitude where, oh, no, this challenge came up or this problem came up and kind of shrink a bit. But challenges are what makes life interesting. These are the stories you can tell, right? It is part of the human experience to overcome challenges, right? Everybody has them. So to shift your mindset, your perspective, onto a challenge or a problem as an opportunity for innovation and an opportunity to make a story happen. Storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world today. So as you're launching your innovation or your new idea or trying to communicate to people what it is you're working on, try telling a story, right? We learned that earlier too. This is how people understand something. The secret of change is to focus all your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Book I read a number of years ago, Way of the Peaceful Warrior, right? A lot of this work that we're doing here is about change, helping change to happen. And sometimes you can focus on the old ways, right? But that isn't as useful, perhaps, on building the new. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. Oh, man, you know, you see a lot of uh, people just kind of lose that spark in their life, especially as they get older, right? We see it in children. So how do you have that childlike uh, aspect to yourself that you are an artist? You can do these things. You're willing to play, right? You can do that even as you grow up, right? That kind of a mindset, almost the mindset of a child, you're curious, right? inquisitive, willing to play, willing to do things with other people, have fun. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten, right? So, you know, doing the same thing again and again and again. Sometimes we have that muscle memory almost where we do that, right? We just do the same thing over and over again, whether it's travel the same way to our work or our school um, or eat the same meal or whatever it is, right? Sometimes we, we get stuck uh, in repeat, right? And uh, we can't expect new results, better results, if we keep doing the same thing we've, we've always done. So we've got to kind of change our behavior, figure out a way to change our behavior, take a tiny step, run a tiny experiment to do something different, to get new results. You gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you stop to look fear in the face. Eleanor Roosevelt, right? So a lot of this innovation work, change-making work, is about how do we become courageous? How do we find those moments of courage to look fear in the face and take action? And many times, the fear isn't a real fear at all. It's just thinking, right? It's, it's thinking. It's a thought in our head that isn't rational uh, that produces the fear, right? But if we look that in the face, look at that thought in the face, and take action and see that it wasn't real, 
Boom, that's the courage we need. Do what you can with what you have, where you are, right? You can start anywhere, right? You're never too old. You never have too few resources to be able to make a difference, to make a change, to innovate. You have enough right now. Never let the fear of striking out get in your way. Babe Ruth, great New York Yankee, right? You can't let that prevent you from stepping up to the plate, from taking action, right? Again, fear, so much of these quotes are about helping us overcome fear, to be courageous, to get into action, to try things. If you're offered a seat on a rocket ship, don't ask what seat, just get on. Cheryl Sandberg, so many times some of us get intimidated when an opportunity even comes our way. We may have a fear of success or that new future that could even be better, right? So if an opportunity comes, move on it. Our, doubt, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. You're seeing a theme here, right? Do not fear to attempt, right? What's happening in your mind, those thoughts? Write them out on paper. See if they are real thoughts or our doubts are traitors, right? Is that real thinking or is that uh, spam thinking, right, that's in your mind, right? You have to attempt. Be great and act as you have been in thought. So you can do a lot of the methods and the tools and the techniques that I'm teaching you with innovation to really focus in on a challenge, to create great questions, generate a lot of ideas, develop those ideas, use criteria, develop concepts, right? So you can be great in thought doing those, but you also have to be great in act. You have to actually take action, right? That is what will make an innovation happen. An innovation just isn't creativity or ideas on paper. An innovation is something that you actually bring to life, make real, that has an impact. So be great in act as well. You see things and you say, why? But I dream things that never were and I say, why not? So there are so many possibilities out there. There's so much that's possible, right? So sometimes we just don't see that larger possibility, right? So keep dreaming. Even if people see it as useless or they say, why? Dream big. A ship is safe in harbor, but that's not what ships are for. Right? So yeah, your ideas could be safe just in your head, never going anywhere, but you know, an idea wants to have legs. It wants to get into action. It wants to become real, right? You know, it's, it's sometimes safer not to do anything, right? But that, again, could just be something in our head. Let him that would move the world first move himself. The innovation mindset remembers not just about thinking and thinking and creating ideas and working on things. It's about launching things, taking action too, right? Even Socrates thousands of years ago was teaching this. One is not born into the world to do everything, but to do something. Right. Remember, we can't do all of the ideas we have. We may have created a hundred ideas. We can't do all of them. But what is that something we can do? What is that focus we can do? What is that important thing that we can do for the world? Right. We might have a larger kind of calling here. Right. Not to do a little bit of everything, but there is something that we can help others with. We can help the world with. What is that something for you? And is your innovation that something? Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Mike Tyson, I love this one, right? This is really true to the innovation world. You might have a plan for how things will go or how they might go, but as soon as you get out into action, it may not happen like that, right? So you have to improvise, you have to shift, you have to adjust, you have to adapt. And here's the quote that inspired this whole program. If you hear a voice within you say, you cannot paint then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. Vincent van Gogh. Man, so I love this thing because it says that action is the way, right? You might have these thoughts in your head, and many times we listen to these thoughts and we don't do anything. We don't take action. But being in action helps silence that. And it also helps us learn and get new insights too. 
Nothing is better than being in action. For all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. So I don't want you to be in this scenario where you spent some time uh, thinking of something great, developing it, being passionate about it, but never launching it, never taking action on it, saying it might have been. I want you to try. Right? I want you to get out there, and if it doesn't work, try something else and something else and something else and something else. We are drowning in information while starving for wisdom. The world henceforth will be run by synthesizers, people able to put together the right information at the right time, think critically about it, and make important choices wisely. Oh yeah, this is the way our world is heading, right? Information is available online at the snap of a finger. But how can you use that, uh, transform that information into knowledge and wisdom? Know what to do with it. Know how to synthesize, right? See the themes, see the trends. Make important decisions based on that information with wisdom, right? How can you be that kind of innovator with that kind of mindset? All right, so that was 50 quotes. Look at them all here, right? So the important thing now for you, I think, is, you know, maybe as you've gone through this presentation, there were some that really inspired you, right? Did you stop and did you pause and did you journal about them a little bit, what it meant to you? I shared with you one by one what these quotes mean to me just off the top of my head. But it's important for you also to think about what they mean to you, right? And can you take it to the next level, almost like I did, where you're creating your own list of quotes in an article, a blog post. You're tweeting them, sharing them, creating a video, a slide share about them. Hey, maybe even your own ebook or online program too, right? But can you actually build and create something, create your own innovation from your own quotes? But the thing that I think is very important is you need quotes uh, to motivate yourself. I do. I need them to feel inspired, to motivate, to get into action, to see what I'm doing as a part of a larger whole. So when I can reflect on these from time to time, read these, I get motivated and I get into action. Because as we know, you know, human beings do not want to change very easily. So if I'm going to try to change and uh, make a difference, I need as much motivation as I can. And going through these quotes, these 50 quotes, really helps me going through this slide share. So I hope, too, that it will help you. I hope you've reflected on some of these quotes and what they mean for your own mindset, your own innovation work, your own change-making work, your own leadership work, your own entrepreneurship work, social innovation work, your own psychology, your own action-taking, your own motivation, your own inspiration, whatever it is. And I hope you've even created something from this too.